studio to talk a little bit more about insect communication is one of the men behind the RoboBee project. And we also just saw him in this film. And he has brought one of his projects with him in the studio today. Tim Langreth, thank you for being with us today. All right, so this is what you call a neurocopter. That's Tell our neurocopter, yeah, that's, that's a unique. All right, uh, and why is this unique and how is this helping system. you in bee research? Um, well, in, Robo, in, in the project RoboBee, we are interested in how bees communicate, but it all goes to how they actually um, you know, uh, accomplish this um, in the brain and what brain structures are uh, responsible for uh, storing those locations. Because in the bee dance, they communicate those locations, right? Um, we know that, that bees have a map of the environment and that apparently they they fly out and learn the environment, landmarks in the environment, and uh, build up a, a memory mm -hmm. of this environment. And we want to understand how that works. So we build a neurocopter, and uh, this, is, this system is controlled by a brain simulation, and we test models of different brain structures that we hope would explain how bees do it. Okay, and I'm um, looking at how a bee's brain works and understanding their communication. Um, I'm still not exactly clear why this is important to us. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is basic science. Uh, at some point, we understand how the bees do it. So we understand a little bit more uh, about the bee brain does it. And then we understand how our own brain does things. And um, at the end, uh, we understand us better. But f as a as a a robotics guy or computer science guy, I'm interested in, in building robots that, that do marvelous things. And mm -hmm. uh, a part of this uh, includes understanding how we could have robots flexible and, and learning and intelligent. And um, so I want to, um, you know, use neural computation on robots uh, to make the robots smarter. Okay, how can robo-bees tell, um, what can they tell us about bees that we don't already know? Oh, we don't, we, we, we uh, know only a small fraction of what there is, I think. Um, mm -hmm. I started with, uh, you know, uh, those biologists and, and uh, it, it seemed to be a very simple project. And then seven years later, I'm like, no, that's, that's impossible. I mean, uh, RoboBee is still not finished. Uh, we don't understand why they f follow, because sometimes they just don't. And, uh, but why, you know? So there's so many dynamics in, in the hive that we don't understand. All right, now we know that there's another RoboBee project in yes. the United States being developed by um, uh, scientists at Harvard yes. University. What are they doing differently? Oh, um, they aim for uh, autonomous uh, small robots that you know are used for uh, pollination of trees. Um, you know, if you if you go to California uh, and 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 look at those uh, almond trees, they they need 80 percent of of the whole population, uh, U.S. population of bees, to pollinate the trees. So that's that's a big market for for those systems. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to have to leave it there for now. But Tim, thank you very much. It was very interesting. Thank you for bringing your latest project with here. us. Thank you. All thank right. You.